So thank you for staying uh, for the afternoon session. Uh, in this presentation, oops. in this presentation, I would like to show the possibility for implementing the teaching models recommended by the MEAS guidelines into novice to intermediate level Japanese language curriculum by looking at a sample that we did within our Japanese language classrooms at Columbia University. This table describes competencies needed in foreign language learning. The blue area often receives adequate attention within foreign language classroom. The red area, however, has not received as much attention. I would like to look into the details of how we implemented our project based on each of these categories. But today, due to time restriction, I will primarily focus on the ability I. Ability I is defined as the ability to develop a connection between the self and a society. This would include one's local community to more broader communities such as regional area or country and so on. The ability to feel responsible as a member of a society and being involved and actively participating in order to create a better society through connect with people, materials and information. In other words, the ability to develop a network and collaborate with people to achieve the goals of the society. In order for students to do that, they need to be able to um, recognize the issues and social features of global society uh, described in G. And by using the skills described in H and connect with people using the language described in C and F. Then what can we do for beginner or intermediate language classes? Today, I'd like to introduce this project that we did with our second year Japanese one classes, which is approximately novice high to intermediate uh, proficiency level. Imagining an alternative what if project. And the class met uh, four times a week. And this particular example was from fall semester 2017 and total of four sections, uh, 54 students participated. And the grading was put aside, for 5% uh, uh, of the whole grade was put aside for this project. And for this project, students were asked to introduce a place of interest in writing. Within the composition, students will point out some positives and negatives regarding their choice and propose a solution for the negatives. And two, make a short digital story using Novio, iMovie, uh, or any other uh, app application they like, which includes a voice recording and four to five photos of the location they are writing about. Three, listen to each other's works, exchange comments, and reply to comments from classmates or people outside of the classroom. And the basic goal given to the student was to be able to handle uncomplicated un uh, communication tasks successfully and to express personal views on day-to-day -day issues by using three modes of communication. One, uh, presentational mode. This was done by presenting their ideas and opinions through a movie file they created. Two, interpretive mode. This was done through reading their classmates' outlines for the project and watching their final project. Three, communication mode. This was mostly done by discussion with their classmates on their topic and the TA during the individual session and exchanging comments on the comment section. And this is the timeline of the project. In week one, uh, students submit an outline for their composition and they include uh, these three things in the outline. And week two, first draft two, four, second draft two, and week six, final draft two. And during these weeks in class, students held a discussion regarding how to improve upon the contest. Students picked topics such as garbage issues in the city of New York or public transportation issues in New York parks such as Central Park or Riverside Park in the city, and uh, issues in their hometowns or issues with their school, 
libraries, dorms they live on, living on campus. And by picking a topic that they actually know well or attached to, but has f have found, found some issues, uh, they are able to connect to their own experiences and individual interest or motivation. In the individual session that took place from week seven to eight, students practiced with a TA before they began their recordings. Afterwards, students also exchanged opinions about their content with the TA. And week nine, they made a movie file and uploaded it on YouTube. And week 10 to 11, they watched their uh, classmates' final video on YouTube and exchanged comments. Throughout this activity, students were able to connect to people, mothers, and often information outside the classroom. In some cases, they exchanged with their ideas and thoughts with other Japanese learners at the university, or Japanese people who live in New York or people in Japan. This gives students opportunity to further develop their ideas through engaging with larger audience and learn from each other. And at the end of the semester, uh, they completed the evaluation or qu questionnaire. In today's presentation, I'd like you to watch a project created by one of our students. He is a junior student from China. We will call him X and later look at the comments between students, exchanges of opinions on a YouTube comment page, and an interview between X and the instructor after the completion of the project. And here is the video she, he made. So X has listed the following as issues with library policy and usability. The library's policy not allowing students to bring in food or drinks is very inconvenient. And when we are hungry, we are forced to go outside to eat, he said. And the facility and resources such as computers, printers, and scanners, among other things, are very of old, often out of order. Computer suddenly turned off without warning. The lights in the reading room are dim, so it is bad for the eyes. The issues that X raises are all problems that he can convey because he has actual experience using the library. Moreover, X proposes the following suggestions for sol solutions or improvements. I will express my opinions in a letter and submit it so that the university can change their policy. 
I can expect the situation to improve if I speak to management at the Butler's library. If anyone has any advice, I will relay the information to the library staff. In thinking about what one can do about an issue, I believe these suggestions are definitely something that are doable as a student to make a difference. I will turn to whether X actually took action later in this presentation. And after this, X conversed with other students who watched the YouTube video via the comment function. These were done in Japanese. And this is the translated version. Student B and C each suggested that X study at a different library or place on campus. And the study A said, uh, student A said, the truth is that the rules there are the most inconvenient, which is in agreement with X's statement regarding the inconvenient role of the library, which is bringing food into the library is prohibited. A also pointed out that there is a cafe inside the library, so we should be able to bring food in, revealing the contradiction to which X responded. On top of that, uh, Max Cafe is very expensive, so it's troublesome. And the teacher interviewed X after the project. Below is the part of the interview script. The interviewer is denoted as I. So, things you listed about the library, anything changed? Yeah, they were true, but I think they improved a little bit because now the computers have changed. But still, the Java co coffee, the blue Java coffee is still very expensive. That's a kind of monopoly because they say the food is not allowed in the library, but they sell food in the library. It's kind of a ripoff. First, X mentioned that some of the issues at the library improved, but the rule that prevents students from bringing food into the library still hasn't changed. X mentioned in the final draft how inconvenient it was to have to leave the library when X got hungry. However, during this interview, X additionally pointed out the contradiction with the rule that prohibits students from bringing food although they sell food inside of the library. And this is a comment that classmate B pointed out to him earlier. From this example, we can tell X reconsidered this issue from different perspective, possibly because of a comment from a classmate and came to realize regarding the contradiction with this policy. Moreover, X criticized the library cafe for being too expensive and creating a monopoly and being a ripoff since they don't allow food inside. However, X thought that other cafes typically offer their prices, uh, fair prices, so perhaps the university is charging the prices to rent that specific location. I think they charge rent for Blue Java and they, that rent must be very high especially considering other spots, they charge very reasonably. So they still haven't changed the rule. I don't think they can, because Java, they are also victimized by the rule. Because I don't think they intentionally raise the price, but they have to cha charge the price to maintain their profit. Because if their rent is higher, they have to charge higher. X thought about this from a different perspective, saying that since the cafe has no choice but to raise the prices if uh, the rent is expensive, they are victims. And he criticized the university for creating a chain effect that drives up prices and impacts students. In his draft, he was just simply stating inconvenient rules of the library. But during the interview, we can see how he sees the, this issue from a different perspective, including the fact that th there is a contradiction and this policy causes a monopoly in the library cafe, a party who should be blamed. From the interactions in the comment section, it might be possible that these ideas came into his mind through exchanging ideas with others. You mentioned that you would talk to someone at the library. Yeah, I submitted some suggestions, but Blue Jabba is not solvable. 
And uh, do you think the changes were made because you submitted suggestions? His answer was, not necessarily so. I think they were in the process already. When did you submit your suggestion? That was just right after the completion of the project. And here, I didn't display, but due to time restriction, but X said in the interview, I've experienced many problems with the technology in the library. And after using it for three years, I thought I should do something about it. At that time, he was already a junior student. So I asked, why did you wait until then? Because I think the project was a reminder that I should do something because it didn't come through my mind before the project. And then I realized, because I'm not that type of proactive person, especially in the realm of student or political activism, that has to do with my country. But then I realized I should probably do something. So X said here, the project reminded him that he has to do something about this situation before the project taking action didn't come to his mind. Through self-analyzation, X also explained that the reason for not doing anything before was that he was not a proactive person, especially in the real of student or political activism. In other words, not the type of person who assertively take actions regarding political matters. I considered the influence of this project on X. And even if X didn't do this project, there is a possibility X would still have sent a suggestion letter. However, considering that he didn't submit it for three years until soon after the project, and that he said he realized he has to take action, that he mentioned that this project served as a reminder, we could say this project served as a catalyst for X. X turned in, uh, thoughts into actions by seeing the issues from different perspectives, devising possible suggestions for improvement, and assuming a mindset of making changes. And next, uh, so we, uh, we asked students to fill out an online questionnaire after the project, one to six scale, one being strongly disagree, and six being strongly agree. And it appears that most students like this project overall. And then students was also asked, in which of the following areas do you think you have improved through the project? Check all that apply to you. As you can see, pronunciation about 74.3%, accent intonation was uh, 80, about 83%, oral presentation, this, and the listening skill, 54.3. Writing skill is 83%. And critical thinking skill it was 34.3. Computer skill, 31.4. And only from this data, we cannot conclude that they actually improved just because they felt they did. But it's important to note that students did feel that their skills improved while being engaged in authentic communication on a topic that they are really interested in, rather than mainly practicing the language structure in the classroom. And uh, conclusion and summary. First, X looked back upon the library experience, considered improvements, and had the consciousness, the vision, and the attitude to take actions in order to solve this issue. However, the chances that this consciousness and thinking ability naturally came to X is quite high. It's not our claim, therefore, that this single project changed students' attitudes or consciousness toward the problems that they have experienced. However, it is worth considering that X decided to not take action despite being aware of the problem for three years. And X also mentioned that project reminded X of the importance of taking action to solve issues encountered in everyday life. Secondly, it was interesting to see X doing a self-reflection and describing himself as not a proactive person. 
Through this project, X realized that he did what he could, although he didn't know if anything would come of these suggestions. We do recognize that he felt a responsibility as a user of the library. Through the elementary to intermediate level of foreign language education, X reestablished the consciousness and attitude that he may have already had innately. And this holds great significance. And I'd like to emphasize there is no need to wait until students can reach to the advanced level of proficiency to assign these kind of tasks. Sadly, a lot of students felt that they improved their language ability through this project. We can provide the students with an opportunity to improve language ability through authentic communication while they are engaged in a topic that they are really interested in, rather than merely practicing the language in the classrooms. And for fi uh, finally, for future considerations, the example of X has to do with such a local topic. It was regarding the Columbia University policy, uh, I mean, university libraries policy and uh, usability. That Japanese natives who read X's presentation did not post any comments. However, there were comments on other students' presentations regarding topics such as the problem with Manhattan's garbage and New York City subway system issues. So perhaps X's topic may have been too localized for others to share their opinions. And we will consider these types of issues when creating our projects so that others can share their input and more people can get involved. And thank you for attending this presentation. And I hope we can have active discussion on how to apply to our own uh, language teaching in the workshop. Thank you. Nanika, do you have any questions or comments? Hi. Thank you so much for your interesting presentation. I was just wondering about the assessment, how you would assess this kind of project. So if you could give us some so for that. Actually, we had four sections, so it uh, you, and uh, maybe it was uh, slightly different from um, you know depending on the instructor. But I personally like to you know respect the ownership of my students' product. So usually, when we uh, when I do this kind of project, before we start, I ask the student, "How do you think we should be evaluated?" and then they come up with the category, and they often start with language, and it has to have accuracy about pronunciation, because if it's too, uh, you know, difficult, like too different, then it's hard to hear, right? So those things students add. And then how about uniqueness? And how about, like, how often you're responding to comments? And, and, so for this one, students said that we have to come up with the solution. Is solution something, you know, doable? Like we can't, for example, uh, we discussed in the classroom, for example, one student was sub suggesting that we should just relocate a museum because it's inconvenient. And is it doable? We <laughs> went, no. So by doing this, I think some of the students actually revised the whole thing and changed the topic entirely. And they finally came up with the category that they were satisfied. And at the end of the semest uh, semester, we did the evaluation. That was self-evaluation and peer evaluation. And they have to, I, I encourage them to like be honest and they evaluate themselves. Is this, you know, the category that they decided is it, um, did I complete, or did he or she complete? Uh, so that's how I we evaluated, yeah. Hi. And you had a result of <laughs> a student survey, mm -hmm. and I thought it was kind of interesting that the critical thinking skill mm -hmm. was low compared to other skills like pronunciation and writing. Mm -hmm. 
because I think to do this kind of project, student have to think critically throughout, <laughs> right? So mm -hmm. why do you think the critical thinking was lower compared to like other skills? Yeah. Um, so we, before we do this, I think that, um, you know, the goal that they were given, and uh, I think for a lot of students, a teacher's intention might include all these th skills, right? But they might not be aware that they might be thinking more critically now, or, you know, it's maybe clearer that pronunciation is easier to see. Oh, I improved. I used to say certain words in the wrong way. And when you're corrected, you instantly feel that you're improved. And especially, like I said, with this single project, can we actually conclude that they improved their critical thinking skill? You know, it's, it's difficult. Like, that's why I said it's not our claim that these skills instantly improve over this project. Because, for example, X's case, I'm, I, I'm almost sure that he already had good critical thinking skills. But maybe thinking about these issues, which, you know, he was annoyed for three years using that uh, particular library, but he wasn't thinking deeply about this. And we were able to do this in a foreign language classroom by using the target language with the, you know, novice to intermediate level who just finished two, two semesters and a half. And I think that holds the, uh, you know, find it uh, important. But uh, so I think this is this kind of skill, critical thinking skills or attitude awareness, those are very difficult to um, measure. And this is how much I improved compared to accent intonation and, you know, grammar mistake and so on. And I think that shows. So 34% I thought actually was pretty high. Yeah. Can I just? Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> am I still? No, I don't think that. Oh, the people. Oh, oh, the people. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I'm so confused. Sometimes I can't remember <laughs> if I'm hearing everything in English or Japanese. <laughs> but I was just wondering what kind of um, standards uh, or what kind of uh, instruction do you give students as to what critical thinking is mm -hmm. and how they should assess this for themselves? I think the pronunciation, accent, you know, oral presentation, writing skills, mm -hmm. so and so forth, that's much more measurable mm -hmm. in a language class. Mm -hmm. But what is the measure of critical thinking in a language class? Mm. This is something difficult, and uh, you know, I am even now not sure whether I should ask my students to evaluate their, you know, critical thinking skills, and if I should give or discuss the definition of it. So for this one, I didn't tell them before we start the uh, project, you're gonna use the critical thinking skill. That's not what we did. Uh, you know, at the end, they were given this questionnaire and they were just all of a sudden asked these things. I, I, was, they, I didn't give these categories beforehand, but uh, the category that students created had some of the, uh, some of the things that's listed here. And uh, I don't remember exactly critical thinking skills was included, but they did mention about how you have to th see the problem from these different perspectives. And I don't know if it's the right thing to give the, you know, right, how do you say, like what we expect them or what we want them to do before we start the project or let them, decide and uh, is that uh, no I guess so. I guess my question is slightly different by the time they're in the, the third semester of mm -hmm. two year program mm -hmm. they have some sense from mm -hmm. their daily yes. you know mm -hmm. lessons and all that what pronunciation is mm -hmm. what accent intonation mm -hmm. is what oral presentation mm -hmm. is listening skills writing skills they've been getting lots of feedback right mm -hmm. do they get feedback, oh, your critical thinking is good or bad. No, right? So no. I'm asking, I guess that's why I mm -hmm. wanted to know what the measure that students are using and what you are understanding as their sense of mm -hmm. critical thinking. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, yes, it does. So, uh, I'm so sorry, I'm trying to say is that I don't even know if we should be. 
evaluating or like put on a scale, like this is because of this, your critical thinking skills improved or not? Does it make sense? Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thank you for your presentation. I want to ask about the, the schedule. Uh, I, I think I didn't, I don't remember clearly, but I think week one you already uh, proposed or that explained about the project, right? Was it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> And uh, <coughs> I'm, my question is like, this is the second year. That means uh, they just finished only one year mm -hmm. study of mm -hmm. Japanese. And uh, how did they react? I mean, the students, because you know, this kind of tasks may be done by the third year, or the fourth year, mm -hmm. in uh, maybe in the usual language mm -hmm. course. But you know, students, how did they react? Did you do any scaffolding, the pre-task or the brainstorming? Uh, we discussed in class, like first of all, uh, what kind of issues they are interested. And some of them, of course, come up with much more complex issues. And then I let them decide, is this something doable? And uh, so they eventually came to the conclusion that, you know, the more complex it is, they, it, they weren't maybe not ready necessarily. But if they choose to, I let them continue. And, uh, but I think because they interact and they exchange opinions, and so after submitting a first outline, they shared in the classroom, like exchange between like group of three or four, and they criticize each other. But you know, we don't have any of the vocabulary here, like how are you gonna do it? And so some of them change the whole outline or some people stick to it. And in my class, I think everyone managed to express their opinions. And it was, you know, like the topic they picked, it was doable. And I don't know, but like students here are very amazing. They don't get so surprised by giving a difficult task that maybe they are used to, I don't know. <laughs> maybe lucky for me. <laughs> yeah, so I think uh, my session is over and I have to hand over the. Thank you so much.